Hey everybody, happy new year and welcome to Q&A Wednesday, where I answer the questions that you have that are most common about your health and fitness goals. Now, of course, today is New Year's and it's that time of year that we're all thinking about New Year's resolutions. Now, most of you know that it's not, I just don't really love New Year's resolutions for a couple of reasons. Um, we're gonna talk about the pros and cons really quick. Now, I'm not against goals. I think goals are super important. I think that we all need to be setting goals if we wanna better our lives, change things that we're not happy with. Um, and of course, mostly I deal with health and fitness goals but this can apply to any goal that you have, you know, whether it's whether it's financial, whether it is, you know, mine this year is actually dealing with my schedule um, and being able to post more for social media, which I know most of us are trying to get off social media, um, but I'm going a little bit in the opposite direction. So I apologize really quickly about not doing a Q&A Wednesday last week, but it was Christmas. And you know what? I just really enjoyed the family, um, had a good time. And so hopefully you've had a wonderful holiday season. Um, and now it's January of 2020. And I'm going to admit January is not my favorite month um, for multiple reasons. Um, one of the biggest ones is it's kind of, you know, like everything's over, the fun's over. It's like, man, the weather's garbage. And the sad thing is, is that it's my birthday month. So you would think that I love it, uh, but I don't. So here's what I do. I actually celebrate all month long and I have a request for everybody. I'm going to post this probably tomorrow morning um, because you know how everybody does the charity, you know, donate to my charity. Um, I'm going to ask you to do something, but it has nothing to do with money. So for my birthday, uh, my birthday is January 5th or 16th. I'm going to tell you the wrong date. Um, I will be 45. Yes, I will. Um, but my birthday wish is for you all, everyone, to just do something nice for somebody else. Whether it's hold the door open for somebody or just you know treat somebody nice that maybe rubs you wrong. Um, but do something nice and you don't even have to tell me what it was. Um, but after I post my little thing on Facebook here, um, I would love for you to just tell me you did it. Just say, hey, Melissa, you know you asked us to do something nice for somebody else and I did it. That will totally make my month. Um, that I'm going to Mexico in two weeks. So anyhow, we're gonna talk a little bit about your New Year's resolutions. Now, a couple things. First of all, there are pros to setting resolutions. I, you know, I do love that feeling of, okay, you know what, I'm ready to make a change. Um, or maybe you're just gonna recommit to something. You know, sometimes the holidays, we get a little off track. Um, even, even I do, I definitely ate way more than I intended to over the holidays. And so now I'm back, back at it because honestly, I just didn't feel good. You know, I'd eat a day or two of just whatever the heck I wanted and then my body would really just rebel. Um, you know, indigestion, feel gross. I can't really do that. My body kind of just tells me, hey, I'm not interested in this. So I can do it once in a while, but I can't quite do with the holidays <laughs> what I did this year. Um, so, you know, this for me is a recommitment. Get back in it, get going again. So that's not necessarily a bad thing. Um, plus, maybe you just need that new motivation. Everybody's setting some goals. And so, you know, one of the best things about um, being in a community of people that are like-minded is you can all support each other. So you're not gonna be the only one setting whatever goal it is that you have for New Year's. Find like-minded people because you will be able to support each other. Um, they do say you become like the five closest people that you hang around, so put yourself in position with those other people that's that's a pretty great way to do it and because it'll be easier to find this time of year you should be able to do that pretty easily um, and have that support so you know there are some benefits to that the downsides the reasons I really don't like New Year's resolutions is because people think that it's just like a two three month goal and then you're gonna be done um, and especially well I don't think it matters what type of goal that you set but I know for sure if you're trying to lose weight or lean up or just be a little healthier um, and by the way, I heard the best tip the other day. It says you don't lose weight to get healthy. You get healthy and then losing weight is a byproduct of that. And I thought that was perfect because honestly, holding on to fat is your body survival mechanism. So, you know, keep that in mind. Um, but most people think, well, I'm just gonna do this for a couple of months and then I'm gonna go back to what I was doing before. Well, whatever you did to get to reach your goal, you're gonna have to keep doing to stay there. So, you know, yeah, that's great. You might diet for three months and be miserable, which I don't recommend anyway, um, and then go back to eating pizza and beer every weekend. You're pretty much gonna do undo everything that you've just done for the three months. So that's really about more about changing your lifestyle and changing your habits. We're gonna talk about that. Um, and the other thing that I don't love is, you know, why won't you work on it for the rest of the year? Like what happens New Year's Day that changes everything, that you have to do something that you weren't doing three weeks ago. Now, again, I worked with some people for the last few weeks that, you know, honestly have been frustrated because they've eaten some stuff that they didn't really want to. And I'm like, but you know what? Here's the deal. If we weren't working together, what would you have done? You'd probably be 
way further behind starting out now January 1st than if you would have waited for January 1st and eaten garbage all month long. So there's definitely some upsides to that. And we all, like I said, I ate way more garbage than I intended to. It happens. Get back on it. But I just really don't like the fact that people think, well, I'm just going to wait for January 1st. Hey, Diana. Um, Happy New Year's too. Um, and, you know, I think the other thing is two people think, well, you know what, I can do anything temporarily. Um, and then they start looking for shortcuts. And I'm going to buy these supplements and this fat burner. By the way, fat burners are not fat burners. They're thermogenics, which all that does is increases your metabolism. It does not guarantee that it burns fat. So, yeah, that's a topic for another day. But it really just irks me when people are like, well, I eat pizza, so I'm just going to take a fat burner. It doesn't work that way, dude. Um, I also don't like the fact that a lot of people, because... Most of the time, New Year's resolutions tend to be more short-term. Um, if people do some really unhealthy things to get where they wanna go, which makes zero sense. Okay, so you're trying to lose weight, but now you're gonna take a bunch of pills and starve yourself. And again, didn't we just talk about that you get healthy and then losing weight is a byproduct. So I just, ugh. it just frustrates me that we all think that there's this shortcut, you know, loophole that's gonna work for us, and there's not, there's no shortcuts. If you want to get it done, you have to do the work. That's part of it. So, you know, <laughs> if, if it were that easy, dude, everybody would do it, right? So part of it is being willing to do the work that it takes. So here's some tips for me. I want to make sure um, that you do, if you do choose to set a New Year's resolution, um, that you get the best out of it, that you're going to be efficient and thoughtful, um, and that you actually reach your goals. Now, I don't tend to set a lot of New Year's resolutions. Um, first of all, I don't think it's good to set several goals only because it's really hard to focus on too many different things. However, that being said, I always like to make a New Year's goal poster, um, something that I do want to work on um, for the year, which last year was more travel, which I actually did, which was cool. Um, I wanted to read at least one book per month. Uh, that was pretty easy because <laughs> I hadn't been reading. I kind of go in cycles. I hadn't been reading as much before, but man, I, I really read some great books. I realize I read mostly nonfiction because I'm trying to learn something. I'm okay with that, um, but I did, I did. I got a lot done, so I'm okay with that. I don't always get everything that's on my goal poster, but what I like about my goal poster, and I just use a big piece of poster board and I either print or find pictures of things that I'm looking for, and then I put it up where I can see it every day so it reminds me of the things that I'm working towards and I don't forget. Because sometimes I think we forget that you know those were important and why they're important, and then at the end of the year, we go, oh my God, I didn't even hit any of my goals for the year. So by putting your goals in front of you so that you see them, kind of like if you're going on a trip and you're really trying to stay out of the junk food and you hang your bikini on the fridge so you see it every day. And so when you go to the fridge thinking, oh my God, I need chocolate. I'm going to get into the ice cream. And then you see it there, you're going, no, I, I want to put that bikini on when I go on vacation. So again, put it in a way that you can see it and it keeps you motivated is a really great idea. All right. So, um, couple things to think about. Number one, it's okay to have a deadline. It's not okay to make it um, a, a quit date. Like I said, if you are going to change your habits for three months, but then go back to what you were doing before, then what was the purpose of it? You really haven't changed anything because I don't know anybody who, I don't like the word losing weight because it's, I don't, it's not losing weight. That's not the goal. It's losing fat or burning fat that's important because weight doesn't denote that it's fat. It could be muscle. But um, I don't know anybody who says, you know what, I want to lose all this weight and then want to gain it again. Like nobody thinks that um, that I know of. Now, maybe some bodybuilders, but they want to gain weight in muscle. And that's still, still a different ballgame. Um, so, again, <laughs> it's it, there's a deadline is important. You know, if you're trying to go on a vacation or do something specific, having a deadline is important because then you don't procrastinate. Um, but if you think, well, I'm just going to do this for three months and then I'm going to not do it anymore. Don't even start then because that's just silly. Um, so things, things that really do. Tips for me. Number one, focus on the efforts and not the results. I think sometimes we have unrealistic pictures of what's going to happen. Like if I go to the gym five days a week, I'm going to lose 20 pounds this month. But that the biology and the science doesn't support that. So, you know, number one, you've got to be realistic about it. But if you do the work the results will come. So instead of, okay, when I lose 10 pounds, I'm going to do this. Say, if I can make it to the gym three days a week for the next 15 weeks, I will reward myself with new clothes. That's honestly one of the best ones because it's way fun to dress a smaller body and it's so much more motivating. And it's a great, you're going to, you're going to shrink out of your clothes anyway. So that is a great opportunity to focus on 
the efforts versus the results. Because again, sometimes I, I think we forget that the work has to be done and then that's changing the habits and the behavior is the most important part. And I highly recommend don't just try to get rid of bad habits, replace a bad habit with a better one. Because if we try to just quit that bad habit, there's nothing there from preventing us to going right back into that bad habit. So, you know, if you tend to eat a lot of chocolate every day when you, after your dinner meal, um, replace that with maybe something a little bit easier is maybe have some berries. Because it's still sweet, it's still gonna kind of hit that sweet tooth, but it's not full of fat and sugar at the same time. So find ways to overcome that. Um, okay, next one is, um, don't, don't try to change too many things at once. Uh, I find it funny that people that don't go to the gym, don't eat healthy, um, drink every, you know, a glass of wine every night, all of a sudden want to go to the gym five days a week, you know, never eat junk, eat super healthy, and stop drinking that glass of wine every night. That's too many things to change all at the same time. Remember, there's a whole part of this process that's gonna be psychological and mental, and that's actually the difficult part. The physical part, honestly, is the easy part. It's the, the voice we talk to ourselves in our head. It's dealing with stress by eating chocolate, and now we think we're not gonna do that. Um, there's a whole lot of things that have to be changed, and you can't change them all at once. And then, usually what happens for most people is they get really frustrated and they just give up. Versus if you just, maybe you drink soda every day and you start replacing that with maybe some carbonated water. Um, that's a great swap and that's the only thing you should focus on, especially if you're drinking like a six pack a day. Great thing to work on. Once you do that and you're good at it and you feel like you can take on something new, then do that. But don't try to do all the things at once. It's just too much and you that's one of the biggest reasons people quit. They, they actually get overwhelmed um, and they kind of have what I call the F it moment. Like, well, F it, I already messed up, so I'm, I'm done. But that's just, that's just silly. By the way, guys, success is not linear. It's not clean, it's not perfect, it's messy. We're all gonna fall down, we're all gonna mess up, all of us. You ask anybody who's at the top or has reached their goals and stays there, they're gonna tell you, they have their bad days. Um, you know, there's, there's days I still eat my feelings. That's called life. I just have a little bit better coping skills than I used to. So, you know, I don't forget. I just sometimes slip up because that's life. All right. Um, again, don't forget the mental aspect of it. You're going to need some, some mental support, whether that's family, friends, you know, a group of people, a lifting partner, whatever that is, find people that have similar goals because you need that support while you're working on it. You also need to be very realistic. Like I said, you might think that you can lose 30 pounds in, in two or even three months, but you don't under, you don't know what obstacles you're gonna come upon, and you don't know if that's realistic for your body and your situation. I'd rather lose 15 pounds in three months than try for 30, but be miserable and struggle and be mean to people because I'm hangry all the time. So again, you, you have to find balance in that. It has to make sense and it has to be um, a good choice for you and for the people that have to deal with you. Um, anyone who's ever been through competition prep or their significant other knows what that's like. But again, competing is a whole different level um, and it's not exactly healthy. So mm, those of you who are thinking, well, this year maybe I'll just compete on stage because that'll help me reach my goal. If you don't have the basics down, you shouldn't be thinking about getting on stage. So just uh, just a thought. Um, one of the most interesting things um, that I've heard of before is, you know, a lot of times we struggle because maybe, you know, it's just hard to get up at 5 a.m. and go to the gym every morning. But I'm reading a really great book right now called Alter Ego by Todd Herman. And he talks about how even the best athletes sometimes have to put on a different persona when they get on the court or, you know, the, the rock star that gets on stage. Um, because maybe that's something that's a real struggle for them. Well, it's kind of the same idea. You know, if if passing by sugar is something that's very, very difficult for you, maybe you put on a different persona for the moment and you just become somebody who doesn't eat sugar. So you know when you, know when you go to the grocery store and the Girl Scouts are selling Girl Scout cookies and you're like, oh my God, Girl Scout cookies, I love them. You know, when they ask me if I wanna buy one, I say, you know, I don't eat sugar. Now, notice I don't say I can't eat sugar because that denotes something completely different I say, I don't eat sugar, can I just donate you know, separately to the Girl Scouts? Um, and I do keep some money in my wallet specifically for that, but it's a whole different ball game. I have taught myself I am a person who doesn't eat sugar because I know if I start eating it, I can't stop. So um, again, you become a different person in that kind of a situation. It's okay to be Batman or 
you know, somebody who doesn't eat that way. Maybe it's um, somebody that you admire on TV who's a fitness personality or a bodybuilder or whatever. You just put them on for a minute in, in your head and you become that person. I, I already know that I am somebody who goes to the gym five days a week. That's just what I do. Now, if you would have asked me that 12 years ago, I would have thought you were crazy because I didn't go to the gym at all. I had to become a different person. Now, it's taken me that long to change all of my, my habits. Um, again, it doesn't make me immune to some of the situations and the, and the struggles, but there's never gonna be a time where I'm not, that I, have, I take weeks off the gym because that's just not who I am at this point. But I had to become that person. I had to become someone who takes her food everywhere she goes. That's always a struggle as well, but now everybody expects it, so it's not, not as big as big of a deal. Um, I highly recommend that you cut your screen time back. You know, so much of us are on social media or watching TV, and I get it, it's a way to unwind. Um, it's, you know, it's a way to kind of take yourself out of your situation, um, cope with life, but I hear I don't have time. That is one of the biggest obstacles, the biggest complaints, the biggest, um, the reasons why people don't accomplish, but how many of us are on our devices all the time? You know, and I personally don't love it. Again, I'm on social media because I'm trying to make a difference. I'm trying to help you reach your goals. Um, I actually, like I said, need to spend more time on social media. I do not want to, but I'm going to. Um, but if you cut it back, that gives you time. How many of us, I think the average amount of hours that people are on watching TV is like three or four maybe even five hours a day. I didn't research that recently, but I have seen that in the past. We spend a lot of time on our phones and on TV and on our computers. Take some time off. Number one, especially if you're at home at night, you need to back away from the electronic devices because it'll help you sleep better. Um, but yeah, how much time do we waste by doing things that are not gonna do, they're not gonna change our lives in any significant way. Um, also, be smart on how you track your progress. Um, you know, don't weigh yourself every day. That's just ridiculous. You're, you're gonna fluctuate, especially women. Guys, you're gonna fluctuate. Um, and don't weigh yourself at night. That one I don't understand. I'll have clients that will check in at night and take pictures and take their, their weight at night. I'm like, why would you do that? Because you've eaten, you've drank, um, you're your smallest, tightest in the morning, and you're gonna fluctuate. So it's for a lot of people that is so unmotivating because they get on that scale and it's up and it doesn't mean anything. Their pictures tell me everything I need to know, but then they get frustrated and they may give up or you know, go binge eat just because, okay, well, the scale's not moving, so I might as well binge eat anyway. But when I give them those pictures, holy cow, the differences are coming. It just, the scale just didn't tell you. So don't rely specifically only on the scale, especially if you have a weight loss or health goal. Um, pictures are gonna do way more for you or measuring inches are great as well. Um, same thing if you have a financial goal, you know, tracking, are you, are you investing that money? Are you putting that money away every month? What are you doing to kind of reach your goals? So if you're tracking your progress, um, that will help you. You still should definitely track. Uh, just make sure you're tracking the right things. Um, Know your why, that's a big one. You know, you're gonna be motivated for what? The first few days um, because it's new. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm done with eating all the garbage because the holidays are over. Okay, I'm gonna do this. And then you realize three weeks in, I don't wanna get up at 5 a.m. I don't want to eat healthy today. I don't want to do these things. You know, we, we do really great because we feel like it, but then once the feeling goes away, that excitement, then we start to fall off and, and become unmotivated. So your why, in, in your reason has to be bigger than your obstacles. And so does your goal. Like if it, I have to have something very, very specific. So for me, whether it is, you know, a trip, which again, I have some trips coming up um, that I want to wear some bathing suits too. So I don't want to get too crazy. Um, but those give me more of a, of a real motivation than to just say, well, I just want to look and feel good. That's great. But let me just tell you when I am frustrated and stressed out, that does not keep me from putting my bat, my face in a bag of M&Ms. So you, your why has to be bigger than those obstacles so that you stay motivated. You know, they say that discipline is when you keep doing those things long after that feeling has left you because that's part of it. It will. It will leave you. You're not always going to feel like doing, making those changes and doing those habits and recreating that behavior to a better behavior. So you have to have something that's going to keep you going. I think the other big one, especially for most people I know, because we're all busy, right? Here's the deal, guys. If y'all are spending all day making memes, you have way too much time on your hands. I've seen some videos the last few days because my kids think they're hilarious. 
if you are doing that, you have way too much time on your hands. <laughs> but for most of us, we don't have that kind of time. Uh, so you have to be prepared. You may need to food prep. You may need to be on the ball. You may need to have a plan A, a plan B, and a plan C. That's what I do. Um, I've done this long enough, I have my groove. It's gonna take you a little longer, especially if you're just starting out. So don't expect to be perfect. Like I said, success is not linear. It is messy. You're gonna fall down, you're gonna get back up. It takes you a while to figure it out. But being prepared is probably one of the biggest things. If you have your gym bag in the car, ready to go, you have your clothes sitting at the door so you can't leave the door without tripping on them in the morning, get up and put them on and go. That's You're prepared, but if you have to dig for socks, dig for clean underwear, dig, you're not gonna make it because you're just not, because you're already not motivated and now that it's not, you're not prepared, you're not gonna get there. So it's really the consistency of the habits that are gonna get you where you wanna go. You can want it all you want, but it's the work that is gonna get you there. So um, also, it, it really is about the, the habits, the behavior, um, the things that you do consistently. You're a whole lot better off to hit the gym you know, three days a week for 45 minutes than to hit it once on the weekend for three hours, kill yourself, then you don't feel good the next day so you accomplish nothing. It's consistency. So again, make those smaller changes. It's, it's doable, it's all doable. You just have to approach it in the correct way. And if you're unsure, especially if you have a big goal and you, you're not quite sure how to break it down or what's realistic um, to get to, you might need some professional help and that's what I do as a coach. I just help guide people the right direction and help them find their groove. It's different for everybody. There's no cookie cutter thing that I use. It's just different for everybody. I have to learn them and how they work um, and help them reach, just like anything else. If I was gonna be a football player, I'd want a football coach, right? Because I would need guidance. Even, even NFL players have a coach. Um, so keep in mind, you might need to get some professional help. Just make sure that that help knows what they're talking about because there's a lot of trainers out there that don't have enough experience. Um, I think we've got, I think we've gone over it. So if you have questions, please make sure that you leave a message below. I get my very, very best ideas from you. You can also message, message me directly if you need some more information, have a great question. Um, by the way, the vlogs are coming. I just finally finished my first. I'm a huge technophobe, so it's taken me a while to figure out the editing software, um, but those should be available very soon. The first one I'm planning on posting on Monday. Um, just also know that my YouTube channel also contains all the Facebook Lives I've ever done. Um, my web guy uploads them and they're there. I know they're not all labeled very well, so that's that's something I need to do on there as well. But as I get the different vlogs going here, um, and there's gonna be some great ones. Uh, I've got a couple of series that I wanna work with. Number one is how to travel healthy, because I know a lot of people um, that really struggle with that, whether it's vacation or business. Um, we're gonna be doing a whole series on that. The first one is how to prep, how to food prep in under 45 minutes. Um, that will be on there. And then I'm also going to be doing a series on um, health myths and what's true and what's not, because I'm so sick of hearing some of the stuff like, I'm gonna go on a diet, I should eat 1200 calories. Dude, that's starvation for most people. So um, really wanna educate you on what's what's healthy, what's correct. Um, and here's the cool thing, if we don't know, we go find out. So ask all the questions that you want. I'm gonna figure it out even if I don't know and I'll tell you if I don't know. So have an incredible week, week you guys. Should be for the next couple of weeks, normal <laughs> schedule. Um, like I said, I'll let you know when I'm traveling and. That'll be a little bit, little bit ski wampus, but I really want to help you guys as you're jumping into these New Year's goals, help you to be the very best that you can be, um, find your groove, and help you to be successful on it. So have an incredible night, you guys. That is Q&A Wednesday. Until next time, we'll see you then.